Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning and welcome. This is Jennifer, and this is our Coffee Talk Summer Bible Study. Glad that you are here, whether you're joining us on Facebook or on the Zoom. And I'll explain that for the non-Zoomers in just a minute, or on the podcast. So we are, I'm going to welcome the podcast. Good morning, podcast folks. Glad you guys are here. We are triple broadcasting today. We're working on um, creating more of a Zoom audience because it's just such a great venue for us, a great way for us to connect with each other, see each other, interact back and forth. So if you're on the study right now, um, let's see if I can add this into the, no, all right. I'm going to put the link here in the comments if you guys can see it. And it's at zoom.us forward slash j forward slash 562 Okay. So the Zoom link enables us to interact better, which this morning might not be as helpful. <laughs> Actually, the nature of today's study might not be as helpful. So... Good morning. No makeup here today. Raw and live from Hacienda Heights, California. I just got back from a walk, decided to kind of readjust my daily routine and I'm putting it into action today. You know how you do that? You have times in your life when you go back and realize I'm not happy with the way things are rolling and what's going on and try to identify what that is. Well, I think I identified it a couple of days ago, did some reworking on my schedule and today I am trying that out. So it means getting up earlier, going to bed earlier. You know how they say early to bed, early to rise. You heard that saying before? All right. Well, whether or not you have, it's true. Hopefully it'll make me healthy, wealthy, and wise, right? All right. If you don't already have it, you will need the Bible study um, packet. Today won't be as important as tomorrow's study will in terms of using this packet, because today we are beginning a new study and we're going to be in the um, book of James. And so our very first day of study is just going to be reading through uh, James with a couple of questions to answer at the beginning. So without further ado, let's pray and get our study started. Heavenly Father, we invite you to our time right now. Thank you for your word, that it is alive, that it is true, that it reflects the true nature of who you are. And when we read it, we get to know ourselves better. Thank you for that. And thank you for the time that we'll have together in your word this morning. Amen. All right, so open up your Bible study pages to uh, page 30. We are in chapter one of James, a brand new a week of study. This is the week's three and four combined study packet that I went over last night in our, uh, our coffee talk time. And I'll just read straight through and then we'll dive right in. This is great stuff. We've got a lot of stuff to cover today. Here we go. The coffee talk summer study again covers week three, July 26th to July, June 26th to July 2nd. The James Overview in Chapter 1. This study is designed to offer daily time in the Word of God for the purpose of understanding better who God is and in so doing, our, knowing ourselves and our purpose better. This is a simple, light study to give you an overview of Scripture and an exposure to thinking biblically and studying exegetically. If you're not sure what exegetically means, by the way, I've done a uh, Bible study on that. It's on the podcast. You can go look that up and listen. There's also a study guide on the website at uh, lomradachurch.com on the Women's Ministry Bible Study page. So I encourage you to download that, learn the difference um, in the types of Bible studies that are out there and uh, why the exegetical approach is the one that you want to embrace. So we, we will read, think, pray, write, consider, and apply truths and concepts we find in the Word of God. Use any version of the Bible you're comfortable with. I recommend the English Standard Version or ESV Bible. You can also use a smartphone app, but getting the Bible into your hands will elevate, elevate your experience. So I strongly advise you use a good old-fashioned Bible. Be willing to write and highlight and take notes in your Bible. Set aside time every day and grow in the discipline of actual study. Amazing rewards await for those who take the time to read and study God's Word. The next five weeks, we'll be reading and studying through the book of James. So there's lots of ways to join the community. You can do, do it right here on Facebook uh, at our LMCC Women page. You can join the Zoom, and that's zoom.us forward slash j forward slash 562-755-4964. And that goes live 7 a.m. on weekdays, just like the Facebook page does. Zoom is nice because you guys can interact. We can see each other and connect back and forth. Welcome Zoom people. I had you on pause. Sorry about that. 
Glad you're here. And then, um, of course, the recordings are always up uh, available on the podcast right after this live one. Okay. So this week's focus, persevering through trial and truly living out the word of God is possible when we are in relationship with Christ. Day one, read James. Yes, the whole book of James. There's five chapters and we're going to read them all right now in just a few seconds. Today, as we kick off our James study, let's read and meditate on the entire book. There's only five chapters and it can be read in one sitting. Take notes as you read. The remaining days of our study will break down each chapter and several verses for a closer look. But today is a straight read through. Just like you would read through someone's letter start to finish, we'll read through this letter from James. You wouldn't get a letter in the mail and read a few sentences from the middle, then jump to the beginning, then to the end again, right? <laughs> I hope not. We want to engage in scripture with that same approach. Let's understand this book as a whole before we dig deeper. So for starters, who wrote the book, this book of the Bible? That's found in James chapter one, verse one. So grab your Bibles, open that up to James chapter one, and let's dig right in. Who wrote the book of the Bible? Well, let's take a look at the opening verse. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes in the dispersion greetings. So who wrote it? Well, James did. We will dig deeper on exactly who James was in um, a following study. But for now, we just know his name. His name is James. To whom was it written? Well, it says right there in the opening verse, to the 12 tribes in the dispersion. To the 12 tribes in the dispersion. Write that down. Okay. Read through the book of James, and as you read, take notes on the following page. Highlight key verses, write comments in the margin of your Bible, make a note of any questions you might have along the way. I like concepts, specific names, places, or people groups mentioned as well. We'll dig deeper in the next day of study. For now, let's just read and grasp the tone and vision of James' letter as a whole. So on the next page, I've just provided one page to take notes. That's because um, we're not doing a really big dig deep. We really just want to read through James. So for me, honestly, this is tempting to pause and dig deep and study and learn more. I get so excited about things I read, but today's the, is going to be just the enjoyment, the delight, reading the entire book of James in one sitting. Are you ready? So I'm going to uh, have my water here <laughs> if I need it and uh, encourage you to follow along in whatever translation you are using, and I will be reading out of the ESV or English Standard Version. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes in the dispersion. Greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. Let the lowly brother boast in his exultation and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass, its flower falls, its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. And he, tempts, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full, fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there was no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own accord, of his own will, he brought forth, <laughs> let's try that again. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. 
For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror, or he looks at himself and goes away and once, and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Chapter 2. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet, have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man and not the rich. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warm, and be filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also by faith, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe in God? You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed, and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see, that person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way also, was not Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. Chapter 3. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to do, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire, and the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire house of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. 
who is wise and understanding among you. By this good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is pure, first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is shown in peace by those who make peace. Chapter 4. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is not this that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight, quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it to, to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is of no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that has made that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives more grace, therefore he says, it says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord he will exalt you do not speak evil against one another brothers the one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law but if you judge the law you're not a doer of the law but a judge there is only one lawgiver and judge he who is able to save and destroy it but who are you to judge your neighbor come now you who say today or tomorrow we will go and do such and such we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and make and trade and make profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is best, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Chapter 5. Come now. You rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded and their corrosion will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened your, your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the earthly and late rains, the early and late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door as an example of suffering and patience. Brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath. Let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has commanded sins, if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. 
My brothers, if anyone wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Thus ends the reading of God's word, as they say. So thank you for being here with us in this great read through of the entire book of James. Go back through and, um, and revisit each of those chapters. Surely as we were reading that together, you were thinking about uh, maybe a question that you might have, maybe another verse in the Bible that so one verse that James wrote reminded you of, maybe some thoughts about the tone of James and the style of his writing. Those of you who like to dig into literature and have studied English, maybe you will use some of your literary uh, skills to dissect some of this um, and enjoy that. So take some time to go back through James, revisit that. Tomorrow, we'll be right back here at 7 a.m., Lord willing, as James says, right? And we will read through James chapter one. So we have a, a big view and we break it down and then we're gonna continue breaking it down to a verse by verse approach. So I'm looking forward to being here with you on that. Um, don't forget this Saturday is our book club. We get, met together last week on Zoom. We'll meet together on Zoom again this week. And I'll make sure that everybody has the link for that, but it's the Seasons of Waiting book. It's, um, if you don't already have it, go get, up, go get it on Amazon. And they'll be shipped to you in a couple of days and be ready to go. Uh, the first two chapters we'll be reviewing on Saturday. So God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. Remember, there is no Coffee Talk meetings. Well, today, Tuesday, uh, the Tuesday group is not meeting because of VBS. And then on uh, next week, no Coffee Talk because of the 4th of July week. So have a great rest of your week. I will see you hopefully at church on Sunday, or maybe around church this week at VBS. And God bless you. Don't ever forget that you are loved and prayed for, and I appreciate that you're here with me on these uh, on these videos and the recording. Make sure you share it with a friend, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody.